This is the logistic regression video and visualization. As you'll recall, the visualization exercise for data with a continuous outcome variable has a number of elements. The first step is to look at each variable individually, checking for missing values, the degree of variation, and the presence of extreme values. Then you look at pairs of predictors to assess the amount of correlation. When groups of predictors are likely to be correlated, you can extend this assessment from pairs to larger groups of predictors by fitting regressions with k-1 predictors as independent variables and the kth predictor as the response. Finally, you create scatter plots to assess relationship between individual predictors and the response. Because of the distinction between scatter plots and partial regression plots, these scatter plots won't tell the whole story, but they're an excellent place to start. For a dichotomous outcome, the first two steps of the visualization process are exactly before, as before. The reason is that they're looking at the predictors rather than the outcome. However, it's good practice to extend the first step of looking at the variables individually to also include creating a frequency distribution of the outcome variable. If you have relatively few outcomes, this might constrain your subsequent modeling efforts. For example, suppose that the outcome of a study of surgical quality is the presence of a major surgical complication. 1,000 patients are studied, and fortunately for the patients, only 20 have major complications. If you're planning to apply a variable selection algorithm to identify factors that predict surgical complications, you'll be constrained by the rule of thumb that you should include no, no more than one predictor for every 10 patients in the smallest outcome category. Here, the smallest outcome category is 20 patients. So the rule of thumb would only allow you two predictors in the model. For a dichotomous outcome, the final visualization step, where you link individual predictors with the outcome, works differently. The problem is that the outcome variable has only two categories. Accordingly, a scatter plot of a continuous predictor versus the outcome won't be particularly informative. In passing, it can also be noted that this lack of variation among the possible out outcome categories implies that in contrast with continuous outcomes, logistic regression won't have the assumption of normally distributed errors. For continuous predictors, what you do instead is group patients with similar values of the predictor, calculate the relative frequency of outcomes within each group, and then finally take the logit of this value. You then plot the mean of this predict predictor values for each group on the x-axis and the logits on the y-axis. The results should be approximately linear. If not, you should consider transforming the predictors. For a dichotomous outcome and categorical predictors, the final visualization step is particularly simple. Just calculate the relative frequency of outcome for each level of the predictor. Often this idea is extended to pairs of predictors as an initial attempt to visualize possible interactions among the predictors. To summarize, the key, the key idea that underpins the visualization exercise is to form groups of patients with similar values of one of the predictors. For example, everyone with ages that fall between 40 and 44 years. Because this group contains more than one patient, your outcome won't be a dichotomous yes or no, but instead will have numerous possible values, 0 over n, 1 over n, 2 over n, etc. And these possible values can be treated as if they were continuous. Finally, you simply apply the visualization techniques that you already learned for continuous outcomes.